unforgettable moment for everyone, especially for Bill Greer, who I interviewed in 1983. I was in front seat. I was driving him when he was shot. That's right. He was the Secret Service agent behind the wheel. The first shot he thought was a backfire. The second? And I looked over my shoulder like this, and I saw the blood running down Governor Connolly's white shirt. And then I knew it was trouble. The fatal shot rang out just as he hit the gas. Minutes later, he was in the operating room as doctors tried to save Kennedy, but nothing could be done. I got real shook up about it. He stayed in the Secret Service just a couple more years before retiring to Waynesville. Nightmares of Dallas to blame. I think that does forgive me ulcers. He died two years after this interview. We still have the old tapes, the old films of what happened in Dallas. But anyway... The President's friend, Dave Powers, now director of the Kennedy Library in Boston, remembers talking to a grief-stricken Bill Greer, the Secret Service agent who drove Kennedy's car. What if... What if they'd sped out of Dealey Plaza after the first shots, but before the fatal one? I found it always, and so did he, you know, but Bill, uh, all those agents were very close to us, and th th they felt so bad. If the driver of the president's car had stepped on the gas after the first two shots, yes, what? that president would be alive today, and he'd be 71 years old. And he'd be the director here. Jump to the Dealey Plaza. I was on the White House press bus. I remember, matter of fact, I've had nightmares about it. Uh, the sunlight on, on Kennedy and uh, the explosion. The car almost coming to a stop, almost to a dead stop, and then accelerating at tremendous speed. So I knew. Uh, you really believe someone else mentioned it was the car had, after that first shot, had come practically to a stop. <coughs> and later on, in looking back, when I said I could not believe how well-trained Secret Service people reacted so slowly. I would have expected that from ordinary human beings, but I expected that they would have reacted much quicker. Because I've always felt in my mind that I knew the first shot missed. I had never wavered on that, and I see now that it's getting a lot of support. But I said that from day one that the first shot missed. I never changed my mind on that. I felt the second shot was not a mortal blow. So I felt that had there been proper reaction time, that the man might still be alive today. Did you, uh, did you drive the president in, uh, in the other motor case uh, the day before? That, yes, I did. Always that time. On the whole, whole trip, trip, yes. The whole trip, you did. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Kellerman was all... Was the uh, your partner? Yes, he was in charge on that assignment. Let's see. Uh, did uh, uh, let's see. Uh, you basically you uh, your all your testimony was before the Warren Commission, and they asked you a number of questions about what happened that day. And uh, well, it was almost a repeat because they asked Charman before I was, you know. And, Everything from right here was repeated with Charlie. Now, uh, did you ever testify anywhere else other than the warning? No, I didn't. That was the only one I did testify. Now, you gave a statement, however, to your own people. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was a statement uh, put in, the, in writing right the next day after this hour, a couple of days after. I forgot the point, you know. Well, I right after it was a statement. Now, and also, uh, there was a, a printed uh, report that uh, a couple of FBI agents had interviewed you also. Uh, no, they never interviewed me. I, I never was interviewed by the FBI, never. Never? There were two agents with me at the morgue whenever they were, they were doing the autopsy. Oh, I had a, a feeling that they were uh, indicating they had talked to you, uh, or interviewed you. No, no. But it was just really a report of that. Just a report, yeah. We were almost four of us. There was two Secret Service agents and two FBI agents in the morgue during the autopsy. Well, back to the events of that day, do you, do you, do you recall, uh, you told the commission that you really heard one shot this morning. Well, I said I, I didn't know at first that it, whether it was a shot or not. I thought it might be a motorcycle, a policeman's motorcycle, but that's what I said. Mm -hmm. But then I said that uh, when I looked over my shoulder and I saw the blood on the governor's shirt, you know, on his white shirt, then I knew it was bad for something else. Then I had an idea it was trouble. Mm -hmm. Well, it... How many times did you have a chance to glance back? That was the one time. That was after the, after I, the governor was hit. 
I see. And did you did you see the president? Uh, yeah, no, I didn't really see the president at all. See, I was, you know, I'm actually looking in front of you. You know, I have a car in front of me. You can't turn around very much. See. Uh, do you recall uh, uh, approximately how fast you were coming down? No, that statement in the Warren report. It states something like twelve. All, all, all that's in the report. Yeah, I think they said I forgot about ten, twelve miles an hour. I think that's what the report stated on that. Well, uh, now, you told the Warren Commission that you thought, as far as you were concerned, that uh, you were looking up at the overpass and you didn't see any people up on the overpass all the time. That's right. And probably later you found out there were some. No, there was a guard up there. There was a, I understand, there was a guard up there. All, all, all uh, railroads are always guarded when the railroads are thing. All overpasses are always guarded. Yes, there were two officers up there, but there were a number of their employees up there as well. Well, you couldn't be expected to remember every event for the last, uh, you know. Well, even even then, I mean, I don't think you know. Yeah, that's true. Those things just slip your mind. But uh, you, as far as you didn't remember seeing anything up on the overpass, no. Uh, the, uh, I had a chance to review uh, the uh, film by Mr. Zapruder. And of course, that tells the events of that day. Did you ever have a chance to see that film yourself? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Did that? Uh, as you looked at it, did that seem like that was what happened that day, as far as you were concerned? Well, I think my memory now. This is seven years ago. I forgot just what I really did see and what my comment was. And I really wouldn't want to comment. Yeah, but uh, at the time, it struck you as being uh, approximately what. what yeah, you I mean, remember at the time. It was a legitimate film, so it had to be, you know. Well, yeah. It was proven legitimate, so no doubt it was right. Mm -hmm. uh, the film actually shows uh, you looking uh, backwards uh, at the time of the... Well, I forgot what it was. Yeah, well, uh, about that time. But uh, I imagine that... Uh, did you remember seeing yourself on the film looking back at the present? Well, right now I can't remember even what I did see. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that the, the Morgate made a number of stops uh, prior to that. Prior to that. Yes, yeah, so the president was, that was one of the weaknesses that he'd always stop sometimes to see again. And he stopped several times in the Well, I, I, I just forgot now. I yeah, but there were many times coming in from the airport, I knew we didn't make some stops. Did, was there a uh, driver training program at the time? Did you ever have other agents that you were training in this regard of driving the president, working more games? So well, well, all agents are trained how to get a, how to uh, operate uh, on and off of the car, the, the security car. They're all trained. That's, that's part of their training. They have, they have that training. That's the compulsory training of the Did you ever have to get out of the car or open the door uh, during the motor case? Uh, that day? Yeah. In other words, uh, as the president would stop, what would be your normal procedure? Well, no, not not, a, not in a parade I wouldn't have to. You know, not like, unless somebody was going to get out of it. He didn't get out of the car in that parade. He didn't get out now. He just stayed in the car and shook hands with people, I believe. He, if he got out, I don't remember. So you would not have uh, had any... No, I wouldn't. It would be on the other side of the car and the agent. You wouldn't be getting out of the car uh, or opening, no, opening the door or getting there. Not a place like that. Not in the parade. Uh, do, uh, do you recall ever having seen a photograph uh, showing your door open and, uh, and, uh, uh, Partially open when the car was stopping on Main Street. No, you remember seeing the photograph? It no, like I that. don't believe I never did see a photograph. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, discuss some of the, the kinds of things that uh, I had a chance to talk to a number of people who were right there, and of course uh, uh, give you some idea of some of the things they talked about. And some of the people, uh, this may be seem hard to understand and believe, but uh, mentioned that the car came to a stop at one point, uh, coming down Elm Street, the car came to a stop uh, for a few seconds on Elm Street. Was, would that be, to your memory, impossible? Uh, wait, wait, where, where the stop station occurred? Yes. No, never. We never stopped at all. The car never did stop. There was no need to stop there. 
Yeah, I would think so. But the numerous witnesses said there was uh, very few people there, so there wouldn't be no reason. Is it possible then that uh, Jacques uh, would have made them think that something was stopped and what it didn't die? Uh, I don't know. I can't. I have any idea because you're not going to stop if you're going 10 or 12 miles an hour. If you stopped it, it would be very abrupt. Uh, other people have stated that, uh, to me, uh, that they felt that uh, perhaps one or more shots had come from the general vicinity of the car itself. Is that possible? Uh, I, 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 uh, I uh, probably, yeah, I've seen all the evidence of that, and I was in the morgue. I saw where everybody was hit, and everyone was hit from the rear. Mm -hmm. I mean, the president and the shots that have hit him were from the rear, the one that hit the governor was from the rear. The governor says the same thing himself. And you were at the autopsy, uh, yes, you saw. Do you remember who conducted or who uh, who uh, was in charge of the autopsy? All, it's all in the Warren report. All the doctors' names are in the Warren report. Uh, was was Mr. Kinney in charge of that? I really don't know. Yeah, that, of course, there was more. There were so many officers, you know, doctors in there that I didn't know. What it was fairly, uh, I imagine it was good security concerning the autopsy itself. Oh, yes, sir. No one allowed in on Do you remember when you found out uh, that they had discovered uh, uh, an important piece of evidence, a uh, bullet that was nearly, uh, that was still intact, uh, that one had been discovered and brought to Washington, D.C.? Do you remember when you found that out? Yes, and during the autopsy. And, uh, uh, someone came in and said that they had found this bullet uh, that was nearly whole, and, it, and that's when you found out. Did you bring Did you bring the information in, or did someone else bring it? Oh, no, I didn't bring it in. I guess someone that we really got it up through a phone call or some other reason, some other point. Because I learned about it during the because uh, According to the, the Warren Commission, uh, this is, of course, what led uh, some of the people there to believe that the back wound didn't uh, exit that, it just went part way and stopped because the bullet was in such good condition. Yeah, I, I felt that way too. That's only my theory, but I'm not a doctor. Right, but uh, evidently this, uh, this was the first idea that uh, came to the people there that maybe this bullet hadn't gone through. That's right, that was the first idea that came to the doctors and everything. They said they were wounded in the back of the shoulder. They found this bullet uh, that was nearly whole, and, it, and that's when you found out. Did you bring Did you bring the information in, or did someone else bring it? Oh, no, I didn't bring it in. I guess someone that we either got it on through a phone call or some, some other reason, some other point. Because yeah, I learned about it during the because, uh, According to the, the Warren Commission, uh, this is, of course, what led uh, some of the people there to believe that the back wound didn't uh, exit that uh, it just went part way and stopped because the bullet was in such good condition. Yeah, I, I felt that way too. That's only my theory, but I'm not a doctor. Right, but uh, evidently this uh, this was the first idea that uh, came to the people there that maybe this bullet had gone through. Yeah, that's right. That was the first idea that came to the doctors and everything. They looked at the shot, they were the wounded in the back of the shoulder. Did you have, uh, did you know? But you didn't know that Mr. Uh, was it Mr. Uh, I'm trying to think of the agent's name who brought that back from from Washington. Brought the bullet back. Brought the back. Uh, oh no, Mr. I didn't know who brought it back. Mr. Johnson? No, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know who brought it back. I have no idea. I still didn't ever know who brought it back. Brought it back. Alongside the escort, you don't know whether maybe one of the motorcycles will back up. I mean, that's what I thought. That's what I made. I made my statement that way. Uh, some witnesses indicated that when you came down uh, uh, Houston Street there, just before you made that left turn on the L Street, that because the turn was such a, a sharp turn, it was more that, it wasn't very sharp, really. It wasn't that sharp. No. Some indicated that uh, the car came fairly close to the curb at that point, and. Uh, no, you still have a motorcycle between you and the bird, so it wouldn't be that 
You see, it's mostly in the middle of the center of the road. Mostly we always hit in the center of the street. Because mm. the street closed off for us, first of all. Mm. Uh, did you actually... I understand you were in charge of the presence of clothing. You, you, you were actually keeping track of it. Uh, oh, well, I, I was in the operating room at Parkland, and uh, whenever... Uh, they put them in the coffin and everything. And the nurse uh, put all his belongings into a shopping bag, and I took, I, was, I carried them all back to Washington. Yeah, so they were in your custody. So they were in my custody from Parkland to Washington, and I kept them. And then, and then, we'll then I turned them over to the Secret Service Security Office. So, Detective Research. I see. Uh, do you remember who you turned them over to by chance? Uh, yeah, Mr. Bob. Mr. Bell. Yeah. Uh, he, was he your supervisor? No, he was a supervisor of Protective Research Division of Secret Service at that time. He didn't have any time. Uh, did you ever have any feeling about the directions that shots were coming from while you were driving the car? Did you ever have no, any feeling? Not at that time, but I mean, after I had looked at all the evidence, I made my thought they all came from one point. One, one direction. Well, you know, I'm getting ready to leave. I'm sorry to do that to you. Yes, well, I'm leaving in a couple of minutes. Yeah, I'll get dressed. Is, is there, uh, is there any possibility that, uh, you know, I really get concerned about some of the, some of the, of course, contradictory information that's come out as a result of this, uh, shots from different directions and so forth. Well, people are selling books, you know, if they can make anything that people will buy, I guess, uh, sell it. But you never had any doubt in your own mind about the finding sources of the Warren Commission? No, no, I, I haven't uh, discussed it at all, really. But you had no doubts in your own mind as to the correctness of their, you know, their what, they're, what they found? I mean, you, you, uh, do you feel that uh, satisfied with the findings of the Warren Commission report? Oh, yeah, I think it was uh, very good. I think it was close. My only thing I guess that it never closed in the past. It shouldn't have been. You know, ended when it was, it should have stayed open, I think, for a long time. To get more information. Well, I didn't ever know that maybe, who knows, it might have been a conspiracy in some other part of the country. That's the only reason I say that. I think they, their evidence they got there, for what happened at the time, was very good. Mm-hmm. You know, you never know what might have originated the whole thing. That's what I think. But I'm not, that's only my thoughts, and I'm not anybody else. <coughs> now, uh, I know that you're ready to go, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this on just a just like, minute here because I don't want to keep you any longer, but uh, some of the pictures that I've seen of the motorcade and, and of you know, the people in the car, I've tried to identify you from your picture, and I do have some of you, and I, I haven't been able to identify you in the car. Uh, have you seen any pictures of the motorcade and seen whether that person uh, looks like you? or? Well, uh, Light Magazine had some pictures of you, so they were the same as they... Uh, that uh, were taken from the, by that party that took them with that phone, you know. They were like magazines, had the same phone, same pictures, did you see those? Yes, I have, uh, but I haven't. Uh, I imagine there were a lot of them. <coughs> um, well, I'm not, I don't want to keep you much longer, sir, and I just want to thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me about this. Report. And thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Bye. Memories of 1963 come back to life for so many Americans today. The assassination of President John F. Kennedy shocked and some think changed the world. News 13's John Lee gives us a local tie to that tragedy. Did a little research on just who this character was. At the place where those who pass rest in peace. One grave at Green Hill Cemetery in Waynesville is a reminder of America's turmoil where folks like Steve Fogg find it fascinating that we have a little bit of uh, uh, the JFK assassination story right here in our, our backyard. William Greer was a World War II veteran, eventually working with the Secret Service. Driving JFK in, in Dallas 50 years ago. A life journey that merged with a devastating death. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Greer retired and eventually moved to Waynesville. Glenn Stewart says he heard stories of Greer playing golf at the country club. Yeah, no, I was surprised to find out about that. And uh, so that led to an interest in uh, 
finding out where he's buried over here in Waynesville. Glenn was told he rarely spoke of that assassination. When it was brought up that he was pretty, you know, closed-mouthed about it, he didn't want anybody to have, he didn't want to cause any more controversy, I'm sure. We spoke to JFK expert Vince Palomara via Skype. There's a lot of people that, rightly so in my opinion, believe that he is responsible with directly for the assassination because, again, they're Secret Service agents are trained. If he hits the gas and obeys an order of the agent in charge of sitting next to him, history would have been different. The author of Survivor's Guilt interviewed Greer's son about his late father, concluding that the Secret Service agent was tormented for years. He had a lot of guilt about what happened in Dallas because whether or not he believed Oswald acted alone or not, if you know his dad would have hit the gas, President Kennedy would be alive today. Greer died of cancer in 1985. But speculation and conspiracy theories live on. You know, there's been a lot of controversy, and there's even some theory that uh, he was involved in the in the killing. And theories that Palomara says bothered the family. His son was pretty forthcoming about his dad. He kind of wavered back and forth. I think his son, frankly, wasn't too uh, thrilled about the notion out there that people thought that maybe he had something to do with it as far as if he would have hit the gas and so forth. But. You know, I, I, I could kind of read between the lines. I could tell it was something that definitely bothered his father, judging by how defensive his son was about it. In five decades after that turbulent and tragic chapter, many replay the horror in their minds. And my thought is, this is going to go on forever to the end of time. Imagining what people like Bill Greer took to their grave. I'm sure it haunted him, uh, being, being where he was when he was. In Waynesville, John Lee, News 13. Question number nine, did your father have any survivors go over the assassination of JFK? For example, Mrs. Kennedy played the scene over and over in her mind, etc. To the best of my knowledge, my father had absolutely no survivors guilt. Uh, I believe he figured that events were kind of out of their control. It was pretty common knowledge that a person riding in an open automobile was subject to uh, a bullet at any time. Uh, there was really not much uh, you could do if somebody indeed wanted to give up their life in the line of assassinating the president. Uh, he only did remark several times that he felt that one thing did kind of bother him about events that did unfold in Dallas. I believe earlier that morning when they left Fort Worth, Texas, heading to Dallas, that it was raining or drizzling or about to rain. And there was some discussion amongst the agents uh, and the White House staff as to whether or not the president would need the hard Lexan bubble top type covering over the limousine when they got to Dallas. And uh, they were going to make their mind up uh, whenever they arrived, to the best of my knowledge, uh, depending upon the weather. But uh, sad to say that when they did arrive at Dallas, it uh, was not raining. The decision was made, and I don't know by whom not to put the bubble top on. President Kennedy always enjoyed riding in an open vehicle, and they certainly would comply with the president's wishes, and uh, he would indeed choose to ride in the vehicle if weather permitted, and as it was not raining, uh, the bubble top was not used. I think he thought perhaps had it been raining that day to put the bubble top on, it might have shielded the assassin's view, perhaps, of the president or it may have uh, possibly deflected uh, a shot, uh, and the president might have been alive today. As far as survivor's guilt goes, I think uh, that is the only thing that my father ever really gave a second thought to, everything else. Uh, I believe that uh, transpired after the assassination was the best that could have been achieved by the Secret Service and all people involved. Question number 10. Uh, about suspects in a conspiracy theory uh, with the recent spotlight on the Secret Service uh, in general and your father in particular. Several books mentioned that he turned around twice with his foot on the brakes and did not respond to Agent Kellerman's order to get out of line we've been hit. Um, I do remember vividly my father's recollection of the exact instant that he was aware that something did indeed transpire and things were not going as planned. He did remark that he did indeed hear what he thought were two shots, and uh, at the time, though, he did not call them shots or didn't think they were shots. Uh, the sound seemed to come from the right rear of the automobile, and um, 
It was kind of calm and gloom in many parades, especially with motorcycle escorts as they had, that motorcycles would indeed backfire. And my father's first reaction to the first sound was that it was a motorcycle backfire. He heard the sound a second time, just seconds afterwards, and uh, he did indeed glance into the rear view mirror, and to the best of my knowledge, my father reported that he did indeed see blood on Governor Connolly's shirt. He glanced over his shoulder at that time, saw that the governor was indeed hit and slouching down in the seat. To the best of my recollection, he did not see anything of the president who was sitting further back in the limousine. Pretty much at the same time, Agent Kellerman did indeed say that they needed to get out of line. They had been hit, and my father stepped on the accelerator, to the best of my knowledge, and they were headed uh, off to uh, Parkland Hospital.